Good morning. It is my honor to present the former Pupils Award. This award was established 10 years ago in order to recognize distinguished alumni for their contributions to society and to hold them as role models for what all of us can and should strive to become. As this is our most important assembly here at St. Andrews, we continue with the tradition of inviting the recipient today to inspire us in this endeavor. Dr. Roberto Lenton graduated from St. Andrews with the class of 1964. He's married to Julia, who has accompanied him today, and he has four children and six grandchildren, and they currently reside in Nebraska, USA. After leaving St. Andrews, he studied civil engineering at the University of Buenos Aires before going on to receive his doctoral degree in water resources systems from MIT. His body of work, work related to water management is impressive, to say the least. Director with the Ford Foundation in India, head of the International Water Management Institute in Sri Lanka, Under Secretary of Environmental Resource Development for the UNDP in New York, creator and director of Water for Food Institute at the University of Nebraska, and organizer and coordinator of the UN Millennium Project. While his knowledge and management skills are obviously outstanding and recognized internationally, his nomination was not for these alone, but also that he is incredibly passionate, compassionate, and humble, whether dealing with his students or with dignitaries around the world. These are also values we constantly strive to instill here at St. Andrews. Dr. Lenton and Mr. Saruti, congratulations on winning this award, and thank you from all of our hearts. Well, that's a, <clears throat> that's a very hard act to follow. Thank you so much, uh, Fernando, and thank you, St. Andrews, for uh, this wonderful Forum Pupils Award. I'm just so honored and so proud to be, to be here. It's, um, it's just very, very special to be here also with my wife, Julia, and so many members of my family and close friends. It's just very, very, very special, and also to connect with so, members, so many members of the St. Andrews community, many who I haven't seen for so many years. The uh, St. Andrews um, has, in fact, a, a, a big significance um, in our family. Uh, my grandmother, Bertha Dyke, graduated from this school in 1900, 100 and, what is it, 116 years ago, and her name is out there on the, on the hall. My, my mother, Katie McCulloch, as the name says, is clearly of Scottish background and Presbyterian and always insisted that I come to St. Andrews. Um, and I know that my father and my mother sacrificed a lot for me to come. Um, and it's, it's uh, clearly, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that St. Andrews had a huge impact on me going forward. Um, it was where I first learned to love math and physics, which gave me a leg up when I went to the University of Buenos Aires here, um, which in turn gave me a big leg up when I went to MIT for my doctoral studies. So there's no question that the impact of St. Andrews was felt from a very early stage, and I'll come back to that later on. And it was in, in, uh, in, in the US um, after spending some time studying um, and doing my PhD and my master's, and then uh, teaching and, and researching as an assistant professor, I felt a little bit disconnected from reality. Um, and we decided to make a change in course, um, and I accepted a position uh, in India with the Ford Foundation. And the interesting thing about that is that the program I joined was a program called Rural Poverty um, and Natural Resources. And it was based on the principle that if you wanted to tackle poverty around the world, especially rural poverty, you had to get at the roots of, of, uh, of natural resources, particularly water, uh, which the livelihoods and the lives of the poor around the world uh, depend. And so 
What, what was wonderful there is that I realized that being a civil engineer, being a specialist in water resources wasn't simply a job, it wasn't simply a way of, of uh, making a living, but it was a way of tackling one of the biggest challenges around the world, which is the management of water to be able to uh, improve the lives and livelihoods of so many people around the world. For most of us here, uh, if we're thirsty, we open the tap and we drink a glass of water. Um, and for about one billion people around the world, one-sixth of humanity, that isn't the case at all. They have to work several, walk several kilometers just to get uh, enough water for their family. Um, if you're a farmer here in the Pampas, uh, most of the time, uh, you know, the rain falls and you can have a plentiful crop without having to worry so much uh, further. In many parts of the world, especially in monsoon climates, farmers have nine months of the year with no water um, and their lives and li their livelihoods are imperiled by that. Um, so it was wonderful that I had this opportunity to be able to um, develop a lifelong sort of passion and interest uh, in one of the big, big challenges of humanity. Um, and it was something that uh, I think is an opportunity that um, I just wouldn't in any way uh, take for granted nor have, have wanted to miss. Um, and perhaps one of the things that I most uh, appreciated is that uh, water is connected to so, so, so many other aspects of our lives. Uh, it's connected to our, obviously to our, to our health. Uh, without clean water we can't be healthy. It's connected to our food security, uh, it's connected to our jobs, to our livelihoods, it's connected to our environment. So virtually everything that we think of has some connection with water. Um, and that's what I wanted to reflect on um, a little bit more in the context of St. Andrews, because we do live uh, in an interconnected world. Um, despite uh, Brexit <laughs> and despite Donald Trump, um, in the end, our lives are interconnected around the world. Um, and it's not only in interconnected by the movements of, of, uh, of people nor the movements of goods. Um, it's connected by the free-flowing movement of ideas across the world, so much facilitated by the internet. Um, and it's also connected, our lives are connected, by the fact that we face as a world, as a globe, around the world, we face some really, truly global challenges. Uh, climate change, uh, the conservation of biodiversity, um, tackling poverty, managing water. These are global challenges that no one person, no one community, no one country can tackle on its own. It has to be tackled uh, by all of us in some uh, real sense. Um, and that's where I come back to the connection with St. Andrews, because if you want to be a productive member of society, if you really want to be a productive member of society in this interconnected world, you have to be able to appreciate the views of others. You have to be able to look at things from a broad perspective. You have to be able to um, put yourself in the place of someone who grew up in a different culture perhaps with a different language. Um, and that at its heart is really what I see as being the fundamental aspect of St. Andrews. Um, it's the fact that St. Andrews allowed uh, me and allows you to be able to um, grow up with two different educational systems, two different cultures, two different ways of, of viewing the world. Um, and that's just so hugely important. Um, it's, it's interesting that even though from a very practical point of view, the, uh, the, uh, the thing that gave me a, you know, a head start at the university was the math and the physics that I studied at uh, St. Andrews, what I most remember uh, is in fact not that. What I most remember is Mr. Porter um, teaching me about uh, literature and Shakespeare and taking me to concerts to listen to Stravinsky's music and so on. That, in the end, was an appreciation of the arts and the combination of the arts and sciences that gave this very broad, multidisciplinary 
perspective that I think one needs in the life of today. So for all these reasons, I, I'm really, really grateful to St. Andrews. Um, and I say to each of you as the future graduates of St. Andrews, really embrace it. Um, I know it's hard work. It's, it's hard work to, to uh, you know, have two educational systems to study everything in English and in Spanish. Uh, you probably work twice as hard as, as many other students in other schools, but it's really, really worth it. So embrace it, make it your own. It will just pay so many dividends for the rest of your life. So again, thank you for listening to me. Congratulations on uh, everything that you've achieved um, and will achieve in your lives to come. Thank you, St. Andrews, for the award.